In 2012, British millionaire Andrew Bush would fall heads over heels for his new shop assistant, the then 22-year-old Mika Kukakova. Mika was young, fun, and beautiful. But Andrew would come to learn that this new relationship would be far from smooth sailing and that their relationship would quickly turn sour. The once young, fun, and beautiful woman that Andrew had fallen in love with had now turned into a demanding, manipulative, and jealous partner. Their love story would end in a turbulent breakup and a tragic ending that would make global headlines. Hi friends and welcome back to my true crime corner. For those of you who don't know, my name is Jen and I talk about true crime cases on this channel. Today's story will take us to the stunning coastal region of Costa del Sol. Costa del Sol is located in the autonomous community of Andalusia in southern Spain. The region is well loved by domestic and international visitors, with quite a number of those visitors being very affluent and contributing a great deal of money into the tourism sector there. One of those visitors would be a man named Andrew Bush, also known to his friends as Andy Bush. Born on October 22nd, 1965, Andrew was born in the United Kingdom and was a multi-millionaire who would end up purchasing a mansion in Costa del Sol. Now, Andrew would decide to venture into different businesses and this would lead him to founding Andrew David's Jewelers, which sold jewelry and luxury watches. However, in present day, the company is known as Gold Trader. Andrew would also go on to open a pawnbroker shop, a beauty salon, and also a luxury car and limousine service. When completing my research on Andrew's background, I did find some strange information regarding the businesses that he ran. Andrew officially had four businesses, but three of them were dormant. His fourth and only trading company, Big Wake Enterprises, was reported to barely break even. His 2013 account statements would show that Andrew's business, Big Wig Enterprises, had only made £21,040 in profits in that one year. So what I find really strange about Andrew's financial situation is if you're looking through his company financial accounts, it definitely doesn't look like he's a multi-millionaire. But his lifestyle, the way that he was spending his money and the way that he was living his life was a strong indicator that this man had access to a large sum of funds. It's really hard to say where those funds came from and whether they came from non-shady or shady business practices, but do what you will with that information. Despite Andrew's strange financial situation, Andrew really lived a life of luxury. When Andrew wasn't spending his free time on the sunny beaches of Costa del Sol, he could be found living in his five-bedroom mansion in the Welsh market town of Chepstow. Now Chepstow is only a 30 minute drive away from the city of Bristol which is where Andrew would conduct the majority of his businesses. Now back to Andrew's five bedroom mansion. The mansion was purchased in 2002 for 320,000 pounds and it had a very interesting setup. Andrew had built a seven foot high wall around the property and had installed electronic gates as well as put in reinforced steel shutters on all of the windows and all of the doors. Top-notch security cameras as well as Rottweilers could be found protecting the property. He also had a personal trainer that he trained with twice a week wore designer labels, and would regularly fly around the globe to sunny, beachy destinations. Now, on his Costa del Sol property, Andrew would keep a fleet of luxury cars, a few of them being a red convertible Ferrari, a gray Lamborghini, and a top-of-the-range Hummer. Andrew was also once married to a TV host named Samantha Mason. Andrew and Samantha would marry in the early 1990s, and in 1994, they would have a young daughter, by the name of Ellie. Unfortunately, the couple would divorce just a few years after Ellie's birth. However, the two would remain on great terms and would actually remain friends up until Andrew's death. 
Andrew was reportedly a amazing father. He absolutely adored his daughter and he had a great relationship with Ellie. Ellie would even end up working part-time in her father's business when she turned 19. Now, after Andrew split with Samantha, he would find himself taking a large interest in dating younger women, specifically women who were half his age. And one of these women would be a blonde bombshell by the name of Mika Kukakova. Mika was 22 years old when she was hired to work as a shop assistant in Andrew's Gold Trader shop in Bristol. She was born on May 25th, 1990 and was born and raised in a small town within Slovakia. Growing up, she was described by classmates to be very pretty and popular and someone who loved to be at the center of attention. And the town that Mika grew up in was a very small one with a very small economy consisting of local businesses and a population of 1,000 or so residents. And as Mika got older, she decided that it would be time for her to leave her small town. She got tired of living the small town life and decided that she wanted to venture out into a bigger city. And in order to make this dream come true, Mika decided that she wanted to give modeling a go. Mika knew that she was an attractive woman and decided to use this to her advantage. While living in Slovakia, Mika was dating a man named Peter and Peter also had dreams of becoming a model. For two years, the pair would take on odd jobs around their small town and they would agree to save as much money as they could so that they could both move away from Slovakia and move towards a bigger city and start their life elsewhere. Eventually, the two were able to save up enough money to make this life-changing move and their move would take them to Bristol, England. Micah and Peter had dreams of hitting the modeling industry in England and finding lots of success there. However, when they arrived, they did find it to be more challenging than they initially thought it would be. Their modeling career wasn't giving them the success success that they thought they would be seeing and instead of making money, the pair would end up eating into their savings. This left the pair in a rather difficult financial situation and this also prompted Micah to take on part-time work to supplement their income. So in 2012, the young blonde bombshell would walk into Andrew's gold trader shop looking for a job. Andrew would end up hiring Micah after completing a short interview and she would end up becoming not just his employee, but his girlfriend. And you know how when you first start dating someone new, everything just seems so amazing, so perfect, and it really just seems like there's nothing they could do that could put you off. Well, that's how it was for Andrew and Micah. He lavished her with gifts and trips and Micah just seemed very cute sweet and absolutely smitten with Andrew. But there would soon be signs that not all was what it seemed with Micah. Micah quickly became obsessed with the idea that Andrew was cheating on her. Andrew's daughter Ellie states that Micah was extremely insecure and had trouble controlling her anger and was even jealous of Andrew's relationship with his daughter. Ellie states that Micah was incredibly paranoid and was always worried that Andrew was going to end up cheating on her and whenever he wasn't around, she would go through his phone, go through his computer, and even sometimes secretly follow him when he went out without her. Andrew couldn't even leave his own house to go run errands or go get a cup of coffee without Micah sometimes following him to his destination because she was worried that he would be going out to meet another woman. And this concerning behavior would continue to get worse on a trip to Dubai for Ellie's 18th birthday. Micah had been on this trip with Andrew and Ellie as well as Rachel who is Andrew's sister and they were shopping around in a Dubai shopping mall when Micah goes into this expensive luxury handbag store and tells Andrew that she wants him to buy this expensive handbag for her. Andrew looks at the handbag and says, no, that's an insane amount of money for a handbag. I'm not going to buy that for you. To which Micah responds by picking up the handbag and throwing it at Andrew. She throws it at Andrew and then she runs out of the store, out of the mall, and disappears for 
hours. On this very same trip, Rachel would also recall another incident where Micah, out of anger, had taken Andrew's laptop, stomped all over it, and then submerged it under water. She would then take the ruined laptop and put it back into his sleeve, and Andrew had no idea until he would pull out his laptop to use it and noticed that it had been completely destroyed and the only person who had access to it aside from himself was Micah. So it was a very clear indication of who might have been responsible for that situation. Andrew's family quickly urged him to end things with Micah because they were getting really concerned about her behavior. Things just continued to get progressively worse and they were worried that Micah wasn't going to grow out of this. However, Andrew was very reluctant to listen to his family and to end things with Micah because he really just chalked it all up to her being young but hoped that in time she would grow out of her childish behavior. However, this wouldn't be the case because things would just continue to get worse. And at one point, Micah would even tell Rachel, who would be working in in Andrew's business that she was jealous of the fact that Andrew had a daughter and shortly after that she would end up removing all photos of Ellie and even of Rachel from Andrew's home. Rachel even recalls asking Andrew what happened to all of their family photos and Andrew would just tell her, oh, Micah did that. She's just being crazy right now. There was also another incident where Rachel herself was admitted into the hospital because of an injury or an illness. And Andrew and Ellie had been over to the hospital to visit Rachel. And when Micah learned what happened to Rachel, she called Rachel and Andrew to tell them that she was on her way to the hospital as well. And while on the way to the hospital, Rachel would make another call to Andrew and tell him that the taxi that she was in had crashed into another car. However, when Micah arrives to the hospital, she is completely fine. There is not a scratch on her and it turns out there was no car crash. She had made up this entire story to essentially put the attention back on her. According to Rachel and Ellie, this incident, amongst many others, showed that Micah was really just not okay with anybody else being in the spotlight, with the attention being on them, and it always had to be on her. Now, in September 2013, Micah would take her behavior to disturbing extremes. Andrew would return home one evening to find Micah handcuffed to the bed and a pillow on her head. And when he went to her and helped her and asked her what happened, she would claim that a group of gang members had broken into their home and had done this to her and then had taken their valuables. However, once the police were called and they arrived shortly to their home in Bristol, Micah would be unable to share any details about the incident with them. She was unable to tell them how many gang members there were. She was unable to give a description of what any of them looked like and she was unable to give any sensible details for the report that they were taking. Andrew's family suspected that Micah may have staged this entire incident because of the suspicious timing of it all. Apparently, Micah and Andrew were in the middle of a huge fight. Micah had apparently taken Andrew's passport and was keeping it from him because she didn't want Andrew to fly to the Middle East for business. And according to Ellie, this incident also happened towards the end of Micah and Andrew's relationship. Andrew was beginning to realize that Micah's behavior was just getting a bit too much for him and was just too erratic and he was starting to realize that maybe, you know, he had other choices and didn't have to deal with such a crazy girlfriend. And this staged incident with the burglary and her being handcuffed to the bed, it really was just the final nail in the coffin for Andrew. He realized that he really just did not want to put up with it anymore and that she really was just out of her mind. And Andrew would tell her this. Andrew would tell her that, you know, he really just couldn't deal with all of this anymore. It was just too childish for him. And he just did not want to be in a relationship like this. So in September of 2013, Andrew would end up calling it quits with Micah. And as everybody predicted, 
she would end up not taking this very well at all. Shortly after their breakup, Micah would start posting videos on her YouTube where she would upload videos and photos of Andrew and Micah coupled with some romantic texts and music and essentially just begging him to go back to her and to be together forever. Micah was just really unable to accept the fact that Andrew had left her and she was determined to get him back. Her plans to get him back would not be a success because by Christmas, Andrew would end up moving on with a university student by the name of Maria Koroteva. Now, as I've mentioned moments ago, Micah was not handling this breakup well whatsoever. She even started becoming a little bit stalkerish and would continue to harass him by calling him, texting him, reaching out to him via his Facebook, uploading those romantic and inappropriate videos of them together on her YouTube. Andrew would end up needing to take a restraining order out against Micah. However, even though Andrew had a restraining order against Micah, Maria does believe that Micah was still tracking Andrew through an application that she would actually find on his phone. Maria would often use Andrew's phone, but with his permission, and during one of the times that she was using his phone, she found a tracking application on his phone. And she was very curious about this, so she decided to ask Andrew what this was for, and Andrew would be very puzzled. He would tell her he had no idea, he didn't install that, and would ask her to delete it, which she would end up doing. Maria found it really strange because the activation email for this application wasn't even Andrew's email. It was somebody else's email, and she just had a sense that it was Micah's. Now, as Maria and Andrew's relationship continued to develop and the two became more serious, the two would begin to start posting more videos and photos with each other on their Facebook and Instagram pages, and this is what seems to have pushed Micah over the edge. In a jealous rage, Micah would decide that she was going to confront Andrew and to make it clear to him that if she couldn't have him, then no one else could. And Micah saw her chance when the couple announced on their Facebook that they were planning to go to Andrew's Costa del Sol Villa to celebrate their fifth month anniversary. Micah had figured out the date that Andrew and Maria would be arriving at the villa and she would end up flying over a few days prior to their arrival from an airport in Slovakia. Using a copy of the villa keys that she made without Andrew's permission while they were still dating, she would enter the villa and wait for their arrival. Micah would end up lounging around in her pajamas in Andrew's home and she would end up sleeping in his bed for two full days days just waiting for her ex-lover and his new girlfriend to arrive. Now back to Andrew and Maria. On the way to the Bristol airport, Andrew would give Maria a 10,000 pound diamond ring and would tell her that once they arrived to the villa, he wanted to talk to her about something very important. However, that conversation would end up never taking place. When they arrived at the villa in the early hours of April 5th, 2014, laughing and excitedly talking about their future together. They would be greeted by Andrew's ex-lover, Micah, who had been waiting in the villa for them for days. Maria knew that something was wrong the minute that Andrew turned on the lights inside the villa because she spotted bras and suitcases that didn't belong to her or to Andrew laying around the entrance of the villa. So the minute that Maria sees all of this stuff laying around in the entrance of the villa, she would look up to the second floor and that's when she spots Micah calmly standing there looking down at her and Andrew. And honestly, this scared the crap out of her. She was so startled by the image of Micah standing there calmly looking down at them that she starts screaming and runs out of the villa and runs and hides in the Hummer. However, Andrew was still in the villa and I can assume that he was probably in there trying to figure out why this woman was in his house and how she even got into the house. After a few minutes, Andrew would emerge from the villa and he would head over to the Hummer where Maria was and he would tell her, look, everything's fine. I'm just going to talk things out with her. But in the meantime, 
please call the police. He reassured her again that really everything was fine and he was just going to talk things out with her and then he was going to get her out of the villa. So Andrew would end up going back into the villa and Maria, because her phone was dead, decided that, you know, everything was going to be fine. He was going to talk things out with Micah and she'll end up leaving. So she ends up not calling the police because, well, her phone is dead and she decides to continue to wait for Andrew in the car. Maria really had full confidence that Andrew would be able to talk things out with Micah and that he would be able to get her to leave the property, but she had no idea just how far Micah would go to ensure that no one else would be able to be with him. Several minutes after Andrew had gone into the villa, Maria would hear three gunshots take place from within. Initially, Maria didn't think that the sound was the sound of gunshots. Her brain just didn't register that the sound could have come from a gun being fired. She thought that the sound was of somebody having thrown a large object like a suitcase or a TV even down the stairs. However, Maria does state to the authorities later on that prior to the sound of the shots, she did hear screaming and shouting coming from within the villa and then that's when she heard the first shot go off and then shortly after the two other shots. Shortly after the shots went off, the screaming would stop and Maria would see Micah calmly walking out of the front door of the villa, locking the villa and then walking towards her and the Hummer. Micah would approach Maria and would calmly and coolly tell her to get out of the car. She was going to take this car to the airport. And Maria was initially very hesitant to give her the car. She did notice that Micah did have the keys of the cars in her hands, and she was a little bit doubtful about whether or not Andrew would even really want her to take this car. However, Micah does tell Maria that Andrew was the one who gave her the keys. He was going to let her take the car to the airport so she could get off the property. And she would also tell Maria that Andrew wanted her to go inside to speak with him and that he was waiting in the bathroom. So once Maria hears all of this, she gets out of the car, she takes her things out and she starts to head towards the front door. And Micah quickly gets into the driver's seat and quickly drives off the property. When Maria gets to the front door, she quickly realizes that Micah had locked the front door on her way out. So she can get inside the house and she starts knocking on the front door and calling for Andrew to open up. But there was no response from Andrew. There was no sign of movement or any sounds coming from the other side of the door. And this is when Maria starts to worry. Maria would end up walking around the property and she ends up finding a outdoor socket to plug her phone charger into. And once she gets her phone to charge a little bit, she ends up calling Rachel and the police and telling them that she was worried that something had happened to Andrew. Andrew and explained to them that Andrew's ex-girlfriend had been at the property. The police would end up arriving two hours later after Maria had made that phone call to them because they were having a difficult time finding the villa. But when they got to the property, because the front door was locked, they would end up scaling the walls of the property and then breaking in through a window in order to get inside. And when they entered the home, they would find Andrew's body. Sadly, they would discover that Andrew had been shot three times and had not made it through his injuries. They would also find the murder weapon planted in Andrew's hand, indicating that Micah had planted it there in order to make it look like Andrew had taken his own life. Luckily, with Maria being on the scene when everything happened, she was able to give them the real story. An arrest warrant was issued quite quickly after the authorities arrived on the scene However, because Micah did have a head start, she did get quite a far distance away from the villa and so at this point no one was really sure where she was. This would lead to an international manhunt for Micah 
and an international arrest warrant would be issued to neighboring countries and neighboring countries would also be notified of Micah's crimes. Now, news of what Micah had committed would also extend to the UK, which again is Andrew's home country and where his family is located. Andrew's death caused quite a shock to his family and gathered a lot of interest from people all around the world due to the major headlines it was receiving. And Maria would end up being placed under the watchful eye of authorities just in case Micah decided to come back and finish what she started. Andrew's villa was also now an active crime scene and authorities in Spain and neighboring countries were still looking for Micah. Now, what authorities weren't aware of at this time of the investigation was that Micah had actually abandoned the Hummer that she took just two miles away from Andrew's villa. After Micah fled from the villa, she would make a phone call to her ex Peter. And yes, this is the very same Peter that she was dating in Slovakia and the very same Peter that she moved to Bristol, England with and the very same Peter that she left to be with Andrew. Micah would end up telling Peter everything and would beg him for his help. And surprisingly, this man would come through. Peter would fly all the way to Spain from Slovakia to meet with Micah, and then he would end up renting a rental car and driving them both all the way back to Slovakia, specifically back to Micah and his hometown. This journey would take them a three whole days. However, surprisingly, once Micah arrived to her parents' home, she would give them a big hug and she would tell them that she was going to turn herself in. At this point, I think Micah quickly realized that she really had nowhere to go. She didn't have cash. She didn't have anywhere else to hide except her parents' house and she was an international fugitive, so she didn't really have many options. Micah would end up turning herself in to the Slovakian authorities, after which she would be transported back to Costa del Sol, where she would remain in custody until her trial. Now, even though Micah does decide to turn herself in for the crime, she wouldn't do so in the cleanest way. During her trial, Micah would tell the judges that she had been pregnant with Andrew's child, and that she she had flown all the way to Spain and gone to his villa in order to tell him about the pregnancy. However, when Andrew arrived to the villa with his new girlfriend and saw her there, he went into a rage, got very upset, and pulled a gun out on her. She claims that Andrew had pulled a gun out and pointed it at her face and then said to her, this is where everything ends. However, there was an issue with the gun causing the gun to not fire properly, which gave Micah the opportunity to jump onto Andrew and to essentially wrestle the gun away from him. This led the two getting into a physical altercation and would lead to Andrew getting accidentally shot. Micah tells the judges that the minute that the gun goes off, she's immediately terrified and stunned, and she tries to escape Andrew by running up the stairs and trying to get to the second floor. However, Andrew takes this opportunity to grab her by the legs, and this also terrifies her even more. I didn't realize I still had the gun in my hands. I didn't know what happened, but I managed to get upstairs and then there was silence. And when I went back downstairs, he was lying on the ground. The judge luckily didn't believe her story of self-defense because honestly, listening to her story, there were just so many holes. For example, she was never pregnant with Andrew's child. A test was conducted and it came out negative and she was never pregnant. So this made the entire story that she made up completely obsolete. Also, Micah had told the judge that she was trying to run up the stairs and Andrew had grabbed her by the leg at the bottom of the staircase and this led her to shooting him accidentally. But when the authorities entered the villa, they would find that Andrew's body was nowhere near the stairs. He was actually closer to the bathroom than he was to the end of the stairs. So this also 
didn't add up. Another thing that really didn't help Micah's case was the fact that the gun had been illegally sold to Micah. So it wouldn't have made sense for Andrew to have been the person to pull the gun out on Micah because it was her gun in the first place. She was the one who brought the gun with her and had purchased the gun. He didn't even know there was a gun when he went into this villa. So that also was another hole in her story. After a four day trial, Micah would be charged for Andrew's murder and she would be sentenced to 15 years in prison. The court would also order for Micah and her family to pay Andrew's family a sum of 200,000 euros. Micah's family would end up covering her entire bill because of all the legal fees that they had to pay for, they would end up having to sell their home in order to pay all of those fees and to keep their daughter afloat. However, this was probably for the best because in some reports that I read, apparently once the townspeople in Micah's family's town discovered what she did, they all kind of shunned Micah's family. They absolutely did not want anything to do with Micah or her family. So the move was a good idea for them. Things get really frustrating here because Micah, even though she's sentenced to 15 years in prison, which don't even get me started, that is like nothing for murdering somebody. You get 15 years, that's crazy. But anyways, during her sentence period, it looked like she actually had a great time in prison. She was not struggling in prison whatsoever. Her legal bills were settled by her parents, so she had no debts. She had nothing she needed to pay for, so she absolutely didn't need to stress about that anymore. In prison, she would end up making friends with her cellmates, and she would end up attending educational classes as well as learning languages. She had special privileges to access the fitness center in the prison center. There was even a swimming pool that she would regularly go and swim at. In an interview, she even stated that prison was more like a resort than a jail. To make matters worse, her original sentence of 15 years was soon reduced to 13 years. The reason for this is because the judges deemed that it was unnecessary for them to have charged her the additional two years for breaking into Andrew's home. So this led them to knock two years off of the 15 year sentence. So she would only need to serve 13 years now. Now you're probably thinking that, okay, that's probably it, right? Like she's gonna serve 13 years in prison and that's, that's it. Nope. After eight years of her sentence, Micah would be released on parole. And you'd think that after all that she's done, she'd have the decency to live a quiet and humble life, but nope. Think again. After her release, Micah could be found going on numerous road trips across Spain. She could be found lounging around on beautiful beaches with cocktails and hanging out in beach clubs, going to nightclubs, posting tons of photos on her Instagram of herself in bikinis and looking like she has zero care in the world. Now, due to being released on parole, it looks like Micah isn't permitted to leave the country, so she has to stay in Spain. However, she's allowed to do whatever and go wherever within Spain. She's also now on TikTok and Instagram and can be found regularly posting photos of her beachy holidays. I'm not sure where she's getting all the money she's using for her holidays and beauty treatments, but I do know that she's failed to pay Andrew's family the 200,000 euros that she was ordered by the court to pay them. And as you can imagine, Andrew's family is furious about the injustice that he's received. This is all made worse by the fact that Micah doesn't seem at all remorseful for the actions that she's taken or like the crime that she's committed. And she's really just back to flaunting her lifestyle. It's honestly a real huge slap to the face for Andrew's family because it really honestly doesn't look like prison was difficult for her and it doesn't look like she's dealt with the actual consequences of the actions that she's taken. She's out in the world now as a free woman 
partying in nightclubs, hanging out at beach clubs, taking lavish holidays, and posing on her Instagram and TikTok like she's some model who didn't just murder her ex-boyfriend. All after having taken away a man's life and causing such huge devastation to his family. Andrew was a great father to his daughter and he was well-loved by his family and his friends. And it's really disappointing to see that he would end up not receiving the justice that he deserves. That does bring this case to a close and thank you once again guys for tuning into this video and for supporting my channel. As always, I look forward to reading your comments and to receiving your feedback on this video and on this case. If you have any case recommendations that you'd like to share with me, please feel free to email them to truecrimebyjt at gmail.com. Thank you so much guys, I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!